Stewie 2K, also known as the man who brought home a major for North America back in 2018 at the Boston Major, where he played under Cloud9 and him and his teammates won it all. But after his outbreak from EG back in 2022, what led to him coming back to Counter-Strike and winning IEM Dallas as a stand-in for G2 Esports? Let's talk about it. After the major win in 2018, Stewie 2K didn't really see too many S-tier performances after that, while winning a tournament with Liquid and then continuing on his career later on into the NA scene playing under EG, there really wasn't a whole lot to look at. Especially considering that this EG project really didn't work out as there was not only personality clashes, but they generally just didn't play too well. So ultimately in 2022, this led Studio 2 k to go from Counter-Strike over to Valorant, a game that had at the time much more popular and the competitive scene was thriving. We know Valorant has been moving on to the franchising and that esport has gotten very, very big. So Stewie made the switch. While initially wasn't really looking to get into pro play, definitely was a competitive player and was streaming daily to thousands of Twitch viewers. He was hitting high ranks, coming up in compilations on YouTube for top of Valorant highlights, but nothing really came out of it. So what led Stewie to actually come back to CS? Well, it had to be none other than the release of Counter-Strike 2. So during fall 2023, Stewie made the return back to Counter-Strike and continued to stream. He's hanging out with some of the old friends like Flom, Cooper, Freakazoid, and generally that group of people while just pugging out, playing face it, and playing ranked games and having a great time. From my perspective, I don't even think really Stewie was looking to get back into the competitive space. He was simply just looking to have fun and get back into the game while streaming for his Twitch fan base. However, something that was a little surprising is that we actually saw Stewie get back into competitive CS really early on into CS2. In October, we saw him join in Mythic. Mythic is a competitive Counter-Strike team that mainly consists of streamers such as Flom, Cooper, Hate, Tr Truck Lover, and more, and Stewie was standing in for them. They play right at that ESL Challenger League, which is right below ESL Pro League, and it's just Generally known as a pretty high tier Counter-Strike. Played a few different series with Team Mythic, but ultimately wasn't the right person for the team, even though he pulled some pretty decent ratings. So after his time on Mythic, he returned to his stream grind and went to face it. And by playing face it, I mean he's playing a ton of matches. He's been really getting back into the groove, playing competitive ranked, kind of similar to his days when he was playing Valorant, and just generally having a good time. Even just a few months ago, he was seen playing over 200 matches, and he was really on his grind. But how does this all lead into Stewie making his return into that Counter-Strike scene at a tier 1 level where a team like G2 would want to pick him up as a stand-in? Well, it actually all started off with him joining Legacy. Throughout Stewie's streams, kind of early into 2024, he always was kind of talking about how he wanted to get back into ESL Challenger League and play under some of these NA teams as he felt he could bring a lot of experience to them. A lot of top teams in North America are filled with young talent that really don't have a whole lot of experience like Stewie does, so he thought he could bring that to the table. And with a shocking surprise in March, we saw some early rumors that Stewie 2K was going to be joining Legacy as a trial. And the big thing is, is that we just saw Legacy compete at the Copenhagen Major with Coldzera, a Brazilian legend. So what reason would they have to pick up Stewie? Well, Stewie has played with Brazilian rosters in the past. Played under MIBR with the likes of Fallen and Colzera, who he be then replacing, and it seemed like maybe he would give you a good fit. The remainder of the roster is filled with young Brazilian talent that definitely had what it takes in terms of firepower, but maybe Stewie could bring that experience he was talking about to the table for them. So on March 29th, it was made official by Legacy that Stewie 2K was making his return to high-level Counter-Strike, and he was gonna be trialing under the name of Legacy. Legacy began their trial with Stewie by competing in the ESEA Advanced Division. This is one division below ESL Challenger League and two divisions below ESL Pro League. Definitely a lot of solid teams in this division, but for Legacy, this was pretty easy as they just made the Major and they're a much higher caliber team. While Stewie didn't play the entire season, Legacy did end up finishing the season 13 to one, ending up tied for first. However, the real struggles began once Legacy started competing in official matches. It pretty much started and ended with the Esports World Cup closed qualifiers. Esports World Cup is a massive tournament to qualify for simply because there is so much prize money to be available for these organizations, and well, let's just say that Stewie and Legacy didn't have a great time. Legacy ended up losing 2-0 in the immediate qualifier to Team Liquid, which put them in the lower bracket, and Stewie only put up a .62 rating, which was devastating to say the least. They weren't able to make a comeback in the lower bracket against an ESL challenger team known as Elevate. They won 2-1, and he put up a little bit better stats here, but nothing too crazy. But in the lower bracket finals, they did lose to M80, 2-1, and it was an unfortunate performance. They have some serious firepower, and they just made the major like I said before, so they can't be having results like this. So after the Esports World Cup close qualifier, that was the end of the Stewie trial under Legacy, and unfortunately, we didn't see anything more from him after that. Stewie returned to streaming, playing face it pretty much every single day, back on his grind of playing ranked Counter-Strike. How did this all lead into Stewie getting an opportunity to play under G2? 
Well, after he was done with Legacy, his future was kind of unknown. The player break was coming up, and there were only a few tournaments left for the season, so it's unlikely that he would be picked up by any organization in the coming months. However, it was shortly after that Stewie was contacted by Ricardo, the CEO of Legacy. Ricardo notified Stewie that G2 had some interest in him, and that they were coming over to IAM Dallas, and they needed a stand-in. Hooksy had a scheduling conflict, as he was going to be heading over to his sister's wedding. While not optimal, it was the last tournament of the season, and generally, why not play with a star like Stewie 2K, it'd bring a lot of numbers to the team, and generally they'd probably have a lot of fun. Stewie is particularly seen as a great option to compete under G2, because one, they wouldn't have to get a visa for a player in Europe in such a short amount of time, where a lot of issues can be found, and two, Stewie 2K has been great friends with Nico. We've seen him in the past communicate, even though he beat him in Boston 2018, they're generally known to be friends. So at this point, Stewie really had no option. This was a fantastic opportunity for him, and he took up the offer to play under G2. The announcement came out and everyone in the community was shocked. If you're not someone who's in the NA scene, it's really hard to know what's going on and not a lot of people knew that Stewie was still competing and actively trying to be on a team. While the Legacy Trial did bring a little bit of light, people were disappointed with his performance and didn't think they see much more out of him. But that's where the story of IEM Dallas comes in. But now it's time for IEM Dallas to begin. We're starting to see Stewie 2K play in a S tier level tournament for the first time in over two years and all the eyes were on him. In benefit of G2, we saw them start off with a best of one against Falcons, a team that has shown a lot of struggle in recent tournaments. In the best of one, we saw Anubis get chosen as the map of choice. Stewie took over the general positioning role of Hooksy, which means he's going to be playing a lot of entering roles and is going to be distracting the enemy team while Nico, Monacy, Hunter are able to close out those rounds with their additional firepower. When it came to the newest match against Falcons, Stewie showed a pretty good job. While his ratings were anything crazy, he did his job effectively and was entering quite well. And that led G2 to winning the first map, 13-10, which moved them on to the second round. Next up was a best of three against Vitality, one of the best teams in the world, and this is where we start to see some struggles. The series opened up with Dust 2, a map that had been recently added back to the competitive pool in place of Overpass. Not a lot of teams have prepared this map fully, and we saw G2 struggle because of that. In this map, we saw Stewie begin to struggle a little bit, losing more consistent duels, and generally G2 as a whole wasn't looking a whole lot prepared. While they were able to get a 6-6 half, they were swept out in the second half, while Vitality dominated on T-side. Stewie put up a .45 rating and went 2-16, and, and let's just say Twitter had their fun with that one. Vitality was easily able to close out the series 2-0, and that put G2 in the lower bracket against the number one team in the world, Maus. While G2 was only two series deep into the tournament, most people assumed that this was going to be the end of them. Maus has been on fire in the recent months, and they looked like the most consistent team besides FaZe. Especially G2 having a stand-in that hasn't played in over two and a half years, and Nico picking up the IGL role for the first time in forever, it seemed very unlikely that they were going to take this series. But the series started off in G2's favor. They got the pick of Inferno, which is G2's best map by far, and Wole dominated the first half 7-5 on T-side. Going to the second half, with the power of Monacy, Nico playing well, and Stewie generally doing his job, they were able to clean up this game and take the win, only letting Malice pick up three rounds in that second half. Then we head on to Nuke, a map that we've seen super strong gameplay by Maus, and they've even put FaZe into those tight situations on what really is their home turf, the map of Nuke. While Nuke is seen as a safety sided map, G2 had a tough time keeping outside control from Maus in the T side, and they lost a lot of rounds because of it. When they switched over to the second half, they lost pistol round, and that did not help their momentum at all, and Maus is able to easily clean up this map 13 to 5. Now we head into map 3, which is Ancient, a pretty strong map for both teams here. A great decider, and it's going to be competitive, but Maus continued their momentum and started off with a great start of 5 1. This led to a lot of people, including myself, thinking that, man, G2 is not going to be able to come back from this, their momentum is shot, and vibes are probably not doing too well in this team. But just as everyone was thinking that, G2 made a climb back. They switched up their momentum, switched up their playstyle a little bit, and they were able to win five rounds in a row, bringing a 6-6 half, which is pretty phenomenal from that start. However, in the second half, Mao started off strong again, winning the pistol and the consecutive rounds following it, bringing it to a 9-6 game. How are G2 going to adapt to this? Well, we saw them put up a pretty solid defense. In their retakes, they're able to take B lane control, and they're putting more pressure towards keeping Cheetah, which helped them immensely. They were able to come back and bring it to a 10-10 tied game, and that is where Stewie made its incredible play to save G2. Down as well, Monacy nothing. Stewie, what can you do? It's a double from Stewie. The 2K. Oh! oh! Make it the 3K, baby! He's holding on to the eight. This put Mal's into a tough position. If they lose this next round, they're going to be on Eco in the last round, where it's going to be match point for G2 at a 12-10 score, so they cannot afford to lose this round. 
And well, let's just say Jim Fat walked out of A-Man with the bomb and pretty much gave G2 the bomb. But that was not the end of the round. Mana C, who hasn't been performing too insanely during this series, came up clutch, hitting some insane shots, and was able to close out this round. And that's when we all saw it coming together. G2 was 12-10 against Maus, the number one team in the world, and they needed one more round to close it out, and Maus is on an eco. And that's exactly what they did. G2 was able to close out the map, and they beat the number one team in the world, something not a whole lot of people were expecting. G2 is now heading into the lower bracket finals. If they can win this next series, G2 will be playing in the playoffs of IEM Dallas, which will be Stewie's first time playing on stage in over five years. And this was not going to be easy for G2 either, as they're facing against Team Liquid, a team that we've seen consistently improve over the last few tournaments, and they're looking kind of strong. And funnily enough, these two teams were the last teams with any sort of North American representation on them, so it was a pretty important match. Then we start off with Dust2, a map a lot of people were concerned about because G2 did not seem prepared against Vitality, however, this time it was different. A lot more calculated plays, and they kept a long control a whole lot more, and generally, Stewie seemed to be playing more confident. This all led to G2 having a pretty solid lead into the game, 11-7. However, as soon as Team Liquid started to pick up some momentum, we saw G2 begin to crumble, and unfortunately, they lost this map 13-11. While the loss on Dust2 was quite devastating, they were heading into their favorite map pick, which is Inferno. But the main problem is that Team Liquid was starting with insane momentum. It looked like they were going to close this series out 2-0, as they had a 7-1 lead. That's when G2 called a massive timeout, which led them playing a lot slower and letting Team Liquid make a little bit more mistakes than they were. Instead of rushing Banana and dying every round, they played a bit slower, more calculated, and it worked in their favor as they were able to pick up the last three rounds to bring it to an 8-4 half. And the momentum seemed to carry. We know G2 was a super strong CT team on Inferno, and well, they really proved it. They completely swept Team Liquid in a 13-8 fashion, leading it to a decider on Nuke. Now heading into Nuke, this is a map that isn't really too strong for either teams. We've seen Liquid put up a decent performance against FaZe and IEM Chengdu, where they end up losing, but they did put up some competition, and well, from G2, especially with the stand-in, it hasn't looked too hot from them either. The initial half started with some back and forth action. Not a whole lot of momentum to be gained, but generally just kind of going back and forth between each team. And due to that, the half led to a 6-6 tied score. But going to that second half, we saw Stewie really begin to shine on T side. As he played the entry role, he was looking a lot more confident and played a lot better. And even with Stewie missing a lot of the outside smokes occasionally in the few rounds, Nico was able to adapt and they were able to shut down Nikindar and they were able to take out this win. That means G2 officially made the IEM Dallas playoffs and Stewie's been playing on stage for the first time in over five years. Now it was time for playoffs. Playoffs is a whole nother game. They have a lot more pressure on them as we've seen what they can do in the lower bracket, beating not only the number one team in the world, but also Team Liquid. So the pressure was on. And their first matchup was not easy at all. They were playing against FaZe Clan, the ranked two team in the world, known for the most consistent and dominant performance since CS2's release. They had basically not missed a single grand final until a recent exception where they placed fifth to eighth in ESL Pro League. So maybe they were looking a little bit shaky. And it turns out that's exactly what the case was because we headed to the series and FaZe was not looking good. While FaZe came up with the elite initially in the half on Dust 2, which is the first map, it seemed like they started to tilt going to that second half once G2 started picking up a tiny bit of momentum. And let's just say that, that tilting led to a whole lot of round losses and a whole lot of momentum for G2. I don't know if it's G2 picking up Stewie for the stand-in, but this team seemed so calm and they really easily rebound while being down on the half and they cleaned out G2 8-1 in the second half, closing out the game. But while Dust 2 was all fun and games, it was time for a serious match. It was time for Nuke. You're playing on FaZe Clan's home turf. This is their most strong map by far, and it has been for such a long time. They know in and outs of this map, and they're almost undefeated. But G2 is able to keep that consistent momentum from Dust 2 by winning the pistol in the consecutive rounds following it. This had people questioning, my, like myself, is FaZe going to lose this series? Because surely not, right? And as the game went on, we saw a phase that just didn't look like themselves. Easily mistakes being missed, and their strats were simply being countered by Nico's outside performance, as well as Monacy and not missing a single shot in this series. The kid was holding down at ramp like it was nothing. That led to a 10-2 T side half from G2, and let's just say the CT half didn't go any different as they were able to close out the game 13-2, taking a massive 2-0 team over FaZe Clan, which was huge for the team. G2 is now officially in the semifinals for IEM Dallas, a place where really no one was expecting them to make it this far 
and well here they are. Now playing against a pretty strong 9z. Well we haven't really kept an eye on 9z in previous Esther tournaments as they simply haven't been there. They took out Vitality 2-0 in the group stage, definitely something not to miss out. However, even though 9z performed great in the group stages, it was uncertain as to how they perform under the pressure of a crowd, and especially a crowd that is favoring G2 this much. And when the results end up coming in, it looks like the crowd really did fumble them quite a bit. We didn't see a whole lot of great performances out of 9z, there were some pretty good clutch plays from them, we didn't see a whole lot or anything special, and G2 was able to take out this series pretty easily. This was also probably the first series where G2 had some serious pressure on them. G2 was indeed the favorite team in this series, and they were still able to perform, which is something great to note going to the Grand Finals. Now it is time, G2 versus Team Vitality in the Grand Finals of IEM Dallas. Probably most people th thought this would never happen in a million years, yet here we are with an insane storyline and all the stars aligning for this to happen. It would only take a miracle for Stewie 2 k to take home the trophy by winning and beating Vitality. We saw the series open up with G2's pick of Inferno. Their strongest map by far, however, Vitality is also pretty good on this map. And that's definitely what we saw. We saw a lot of back and forth action. Even though G2 did start off kind of strong with a little bit of a lead, Vitality came back and made up for it, and they had a pretty good half. However, going into that second half, we saw Vitality up an 11 to 6 score, but G2 wasn't going to let that happen, and they made an immense comeback. Monacy and Hunter really stepped it up in that second half to bring home those CT rounds, and while Mezzi and Zaiwu were performing really good as well, they weren't able to close out the match, and it ended up at a tied 12-12 going into overtime. And overtime didn't start off too strong either, even with G2 being pretty performance and dominance on CT side, Vitality on T side was able to pick up immediately three rounds, and going into that second half of overtime, it was looking like Vitality was going to close it out. However, G2 adjusted their playstyle compared to how they were playing earlier in the game when they were on T side, and they were able to pick up three rounds in a row, which brought it to a double overtime match. And that's where we saw G2 continue their momentum with some extremely close rounds. Vitality picked up one round, G2 picked up two in that first half of second overtime, and then heading into double overtime, G2 was finally able to close out this match. And this was a massive win for G2. Vitality not only had the lead earlier, but they had a 3-0 lead in overtime, and they just needed one more round, but they weren't able to close it out. We saw Apex's frustration throughout this match, and it was apparent that they were tilting, and he was extremely upset about this. So that led into map 2 which was Anubis, Anubis being a very strong map for Vitality and we haven't seen a whole lot of G2 in Anubis so the performance is going to be quite questionable. And questionable was what it was to say the least. We saw G2 put up a 5-7 half against Vitality on T side. As many of you know Anubis is a very T heavy map and putting up only 5 rounds most likely wasn't going to cut it. And going into the second half, it looks like Vitality was going to clean up this match no problem by getting 5 rounds immediately on the T side and bring it to a 12-5 game. But then all of a sudden, I don't know how they do this or if some sort of miracle happened, but G2 was able to pick up some momentum. We saw them winning more duels, we saw them taking B site and abusing A site a ton. Spink was getting caught off guard every single round when they were able to take A site and win 6 rounds in a row. But then it was time for the second overtime of this match and we saw Vitality not give up this time. Their mental was back, Zaiwu and Mezzi playing absolutely outside of their mind and they performed fantastic. Vitality was able to close it overtime 16-13. A devastating loss for G2 considering how close they were to making a comeback, but it is what it is, it could have gone worse. And then the final map, the most important map of this entire journey, getting into IEM Dallas, playing as a stand-in for G2, it was time for Nuke. From that series where G2 played Liquid in the lower bracket finals, we know G2 can be competitive on Nuke, but are they able to be competitive against a team like Vitality? Well exactly what they were. We know G2 has a pretty CT-sided team, they're very strong in the CT, as they can put Monacy in positions where he can hold down sites of the op, and Hunter and Nico can work together, and well, it's kind of what we were expecting in the first half. In the first half for G2, they picked up six rounds, however, wasn't anything too special. A lot of these rounds, they definitely could have closed out, as they were super close rounds. I'm talking 1v1s, and many 1v2s and 1v3s from the Team Vitality side. So closing out the half, 6-6 was unfortunate for them, but we know they are strong on CT. 
Going into the second half, when G2 switched over to CT side, this was huge. G2 won the pistol round, which is incredibly important for them to bring on the momentum and their economy, and they were only able to close out five rounds in a row, bringing them to an 11 6 scoreline. And while Vitality was able to fight back a little bit by picking up two full buy rounds, it wasn't enough. G2 was able to close out two rounds in a row with Monacy doing some absolutely insane plays and even beating Zayu in a 1v1. And that led to G2 taking over the win against Vitality 13 to 8, and they won IEM Dallas. An absolutely insane storyline of Stewie 2K coming back after all these years to compete as a stand-in for the first time with no expectations on G2 of whether or not they would do well at all, and the fact that they were able to beat Mao's, Liquid, FaZe, and Vitality is just absolutely bonkers to think about. And right there is a story on how G2 was able to take the win and bring Stewie his first title in over five years. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.